It's not often that Dutch people are added to Europe's most wanted list, so if you're put on that list, you've done something serious. To give an idea, the last few names that were added were from well-known and notorious criminals such as Ridwan Tahi and Jos Leideckers. But now, they've decided to put a new name on that list. It's the name of a man who remained unknown to the broader public for a long time. This man has been accused of smuggling hundreds of kilos of coke into the country and was a prime suspect in a hit that took place. Will you blame him? He didn't know any better, as he grew up with a father that was heavily involved in the drug trade as well. This is the story of Marco Eben, the Netherlands' new most wanted man. Marco was born on the 31st of March 1992 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Very little is known about him and his early life. However, for an explanation as to why he has entered the world of drug smuggling, we don't have to look very far. Because there is someone who is a bit more well known than him, and that is his father, Hank. Ever since the 90s, Hank has been involved in the underworld. In that period, he has been convicted for drug smuggling and ordering a hit on someone. Together with his father, Marco would go on to smuggle hundreds of kilos of coke as well as other substances into the Netherlands, establishing a true father and son business. They were notorious in the Rotterdam area, and that wasn't unwarranted. On a Thursday evening, February 14th, 2013, around 11.45 p.m., police were informed by a passerby that a car, a green Daihatsu Grand Move, was parked in the opposite direction on the road in Rotterdam. Upon arrival, police initially thought it was an accident, but that wasn't the case. Officers found the lifeless body of 32-year-old Pepijn van der Velden and immediately saw his gunshot wounds. He had been shot multiple times. For a month, investigators worked on the case in silence. Pepijn was involved in the underworlds and was said to have some serious debts with the wrong kind of people. Then, after a month of investigating, police raided the home of Marco, just 21 years old at the time, as well as his father's home. Police had a lead that Marco and his father were behind the hit. They were both arrested, and their homes were searched thoroughly, hoping to find the weapon in question, but to no avail. After being jailed for three months, Marco and his father were released due to a lack of evidence. Both pleaded their innocence and said they had nothing to do with the case. They remained suspects, though it for sure wasn't the last time Marco and his father would get themselves in trouble. What the two men weren't aware of was that right after their release, police decided to observe them intensely as they suspected them of being involved in the drug trade. Unknowingly, Marco went about his business and resumed his drug smuggling activities again. To be able to successfully conduct his business, Marco had access to one very important asset. In 2014, a man called Hedit G was first introduced to his father Henk by another drug smuggler called René F. Marco's father in turn shared the contact with his son. Gerrit was a corrupt customs officer with power in the port of Rotterdam. He had been working as a customs officer since 1981 and started working on the pre-arrival dock in 2009. This dock is where containers from high-risk countries arrive and get checked. Though only if Gerrit wanted them to be checked, South American countries known for their coke smuggling are perceived as high-risk countries. Herit had a crucial spot in the port, a true unicorn who knows the entire port of Rotterdam like the back of his hand. It is a dream for every drug smuggler to have him on their side. Ever since 2012, he started using his power for the wrong people. He succumbed to the insane amounts of money there were to be made if he just did something as simple as removing a specific container from the list of containers that were scheduled to be scanned and checked. Gerrit was able to do this from the comfort of his own home and would be able to receive upwards of 500,000 euros per successful shipment, sometimes even up to 30% of the value of the shipment. In the years that followed, Marco, together with Gerrit and his father Henk, would go on to bring hundreds of kilos of coke into the port of Rotterdam. One of those shipments was in June 2014, which was a small test. PGP messages revealed that their first collaboration was a success and that the coke had arrived safely in the port of Rotterdam, hidden between Maripa palm. The Maripa palm is a species of palm from South America. Another one of those successful shipments was shipped via the Harmonia Antofagasta, sailing from Panama. Several hundred kilos of coke were aboard the boat, with the final destination being the port of Rotterdam. On the 20th of February 2015, the shipment arrived in the port of Rotterdam. Several containers that were offloaded from the boats were scheduled to be checked. 
You can probably feel it coming. Those weren't the containers with the coke, of course. Corrupt customs officer Herit had made sure that that was not the case. Shortly after the containers had safely left the port of Rotterdam, Marco and Henk received a PGP message. Congratulations. Shortly after this successful shipment, Marco and the others were eager to do it once again and organized another shipment. This time, it went totally different. The coke was loaded onto Marfret Marajo, which was headed from Belém, Brazil, to the port of Rotterdam. The shipment arrived on the 17th of April 2015, according to plan, but Gerrit was not able to work his magic. Whatever he tried, he couldn't get the containers off the scan and checklist. The shipment of 400 kilos of coke hidden in pineapples was seized shortly after it arrived. Shipment failed. The reason for this failure was because police, in cooperation with customs, already had eyes on the container. The men weren't aware that Gerrit was under heavy surveillance after police received an anonymous tip stating that he was corrupt and conspiring with drug smugglers. Gerrit was arrested on the same day in his home, where they found 1.17 million euros in cash. Marco's unicorn would become his downfall. Police now set their sights on him. What did not help either is that Gerrit's arrest voice recordings surfaced of him talking about the best ways to smuggle, giving the police further evidence he was involved. As a result of the case against Gerrit, Marco was arrested as well two years later, in 2017. Prosecutors demanded a 12-year jail sentence. Interestingly enough, a large part of the evidence came from tapped conversations, inside of Marco's home and car. Without him knowing, police had put microphones in his home and car, which allowed them to listen into every conversation he had for a long time. Also, those with his father when they discussed business. Marco refused to say anything during the police investigation and the weeks-long trial. However, on the last day of the trial, he suddenly did have something to say. He expressed to the court the hope for a fair trial. It won't be easy when I come out ever again. My grandfather passed, my dog passed, and my relationship is over. To the prosecutors who say I am a big player, that's really nonsense. Marco and his lawyer, Jan Hein Kuypers, appealed the sentence, which led to Marco being allowed to await the rest of his trial in freedom in 2019. This freedom also came at a great cost, though. On the 14th of May, 2020, Marco allegedly became the victim of an attempted hit on his life. Or at least, that's what he said. At around 7.45, he called the police emergency number in panic, saying that he had just been shot at multiple times and managed to shake off the attackers. Police rushed to the scene with multiple cars and even a helicopter and found Marco and someone else sat in his black Range Rover. After investigation, police said that they were unable to tell whether there had actually been shots fired. They did not find any shells nor the suspects. What did not help either was that Marco did not want to cooperate with the police and their investigation. All he said was that while traveling from Amsterdam to Rotterdam, he had a feeling that he was being shadowed by men in a BMW. After he hit the gas and attempted to flee, the BMW immediately followed him, and one of the men allegedly shot at his car multiple times. There weren't any people arrested for this incident. After appealing the sentence, Marco was eventually sentenced to seven years and four months on the 2nd of October 2020. Well, whatever the outcome of the appeal was, Marco wasn't planning on serving this time anyway, and disappeared prior to the ruling. He officially chose to live life on the run. For the next three years, it went silent. But on the 17th of November, 2023, Marco's life would change significantly. As I've mentioned earlier, Marco was totally unknown to the broader public. We know that if there's anything important to living a life as a drug smuggler, it's staying under the radar. Well, that totally changed after Marco was put on Europe's most wanted fugitives list. The news was widely spread through the Netherlands and the rest of Europe. This could be seen as the first of many measures that Dutch law enforcement are taking to have Marco arrested and serve his time. It's definitely a story to keep a close eye on. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment sharing your thoughts, giving feedback, or share new ideas. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss an upload.